you know, part of recording these short, <laughs> they're short, devotionals, or devotionals with emotion that I wanted to communicate and share was that the reality of not just reading a devotion or having Jesus sit here with us, you know, participating and and being aware that God is here, you know, in the midst of us and that he's inside us and that he's all around us and that he works through us and that he may be speaking to us as well as speaking from even me, you know, to you and from you to me in some way through the word that because of how he does things by his own choice, <laughs> When I, before I even walk out here to sit down to share or to explain or to open my mouth and see what comes out, <laughs> which is basically the truth, I have no preconceived idea of what the Lord is going to say. Right before I walk out here, sometimes He gives me a word, like He'll say, as I'm walking or thinking or talking to God, He'll say something bluntly, you know, and I'll be okay, you know whatever it may be and then suddenly as I start to talk on that subject bingo it all just flows right out and it's like wow praise the Lord and even I go back and listen and go boy Lord you were talking to me man that's cool you know I didn't know <laughs> you know people must think that you know I'm a genius or something and the truth is in me there dwells no good thing I mean the reality of who I am I could talk about any subject you know and babble but when it's God in us, he chooses to speak through us, then it becomes obvious to those around us because we're suddenly infused with that which God said he would do by his Holy Spirit. He would come into us, he would inspire us, he would direct us, and he would give us the words to say at the time that we needed to say them. So if you're really all pre-programmed, you know, and got outlines and all these other things, you know, well, you know, I'm happy for you, and I'm glad that you do. I've never done it, you know, and I don't like to, and I wouldn't because I choose not to. But if it works for you, cool. You know, I just don't think that that's what Jesus told me to do, you know. And so whenever I've gone to a church or I give a talk or whatever it may be, yeah, you know, I may have a title. <laughs> but after that, me and the Lord, we're running wherever he wants to go. And lots of times people think that it's, very well organized and all lined out on paper and I just looked down at notes and go I think there's only one or two scriptures here and you know even then sometimes I don't even use them so praise the Lord you know whatsoever God directs you today that you hear from him to say then he will inspire you along the way and that's what I wanted to share always in the alternative that maybe this is for you that it isn't always about some religion or some boxed idea that you have to walk in you know constantly doing exactly the same thing over and over again to where you got it polished and you know every single nuance of what you're going to say and you raise your eyebrows and you say amen and you slap this and slap that and fall down and roll around and do all these weird things but that let God have his way in you today and let him do what he wants rather than what you programmed him to do works for me and that's partly why we do it this way is to be exactly, exactly what you see is what you get. For better, for worse, for too bright, too dark, for whatever it may be. So we know that it's God that works and it's not canned and planned. And I like to say spammed. <laughs> and, re and the rest, some on board, some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Acts 27:44 in Strength in the Desert. The marvelous story of Paul's voyage to Rome with its trials and triumphs is a fine pattern of the lights and shades of the way of faith all through the story of human life. The remarkable feature of it is the hard and narrow places which we find intermingled with God's extraordinary interpositions and providences. In other words, God intervened. It is the common idea that the pathway of faith is strewn with flowers and that when people interpose, and that when God interposes in the life of his people, he does it on a scale so grand that he lifts us quite out of the plane of difficulties, that somehow when you become a Christian, everything becomes easy. The actual fact, however, is that the real experience is quite contrary. It's completely different than what that is. 
The story of the Bible is one of alter, alternate trial and triumph in the case of everyone of the cloud of witnesses from Abel down to the last martyr. In some things they won, and some things they failed. In some things they succeeded, and some things they did not. Paul, more than anyone else, was an example of how much a child of God can suffer without being crushed or broken in spirit. On account of his testifying in Damascus, he was hunted down by persecutors and obliged to flee for his life. But we behold no heavenly chariot transporting the holy apostles amid thunderbolts of flame from the reach of his foes, much like what people would tell you today, that they can go out and somehow conquer in God's name. And yet the reality is, here we see Paul fleeing when he would have had greater power or authority than those that use the authority of God nowadays to say they are doing all these wonderful, marvelous works in his name and doing all these things that they say that they can tell the devil to flee and the conquering to happen and they don't have to be what? Challenged like Paul was? It's kind of a different viewpoint of the ministry, don't you think? But through a window in a basket, he was let down over the walls of Damascus and so escaped their hands. That doesn't sound like a victorious Christian life, does it? Hmm. In an old clothes basket, like a bundle of laundry or groceries, the servant of Jesus Christ was dropped from the window and ignominious and fled from the hate of his foes. It wasn't as though he conquered. Again, we find him left for months in the lonely dungeons. We find him telling of his watchings, his fastings, and his desertion by friends, of his brutal and shameful beatings. And even here, after God has promised to deliver him, we see him for days left to toss upon a stormy sea, obliged to stand guard over the treacherous seamen. And at last, when deliverance comes, there is no heavenly galley sailing from the skies to take off the noble prisoner. There is no angel form walking along the waters and still the raging breakers. There is no supernatural sign of the transcendent miracle that is being wrought, but one is compelled to seize a spar, an oar, another a floating plank, another to climb on a fragment of the wreck, another to strike out and swim for his life. Does that sound like deliverance? Sometimes I think the deliverance ministries needs to be delivered from the deliverance that they're delivering, because in reality, it sounds like Paul didn't have quite so delivering a deliverance ministry as he was delivered from. But God delivered him anyways. Don't you think so? Here is God's pattern for our own lives. Here is a gospel of help for people that have to live in this everyday world with real and ordinary surroundings and a thousand practical conditions which have to be met in a thoroughly practical way. You see, it's not the way that God delivers so much that's important, but the reality that God is in every circumstance of your life. So if he delivers you in a deliverance way, in a deliverance kind of thing, you know, in a deliverance setting, well then, praise the Lord, he delivered you. If he takes care of you and provides for you and delivers you from some circumstance of your life in a practical way, that you just know that the circumstances came together and, wow, suddenly it was there and, you know, you were provided for, or somebody gave you a can of gas, you know, and you didn't have any money and you were able to go and put that in your car and then you were heading down the way and suddenly you knew that you had to take your daughter or your son to the hospital and you were able to do that because of that one can of gas. That's God in a practical way. It doesn't always have to be some spiritual wacko, weirdo kind of thing. It can be, but it can also be very simple, very subtle, and very directed by God behind the scenes. God's promises and God's providences do not lift us out of the plane of common sense and commonplace trial, but it is through these very things that faith is perfected, and that God loves to interweave the golden threads of his love along the warp and woof of everyday life's experiences. In other words, in everything you do and everywhere you go, God is working through and through everything that is around you, to you, about you, and in you, because he has the ability to work through the practical, through the physical, through the emotional, and through the spiritual. And he's going to bring each one of them into alignment with the realization that he is in all of them because he created the universe. And he's able to work in spite of what people think or try to program him into a box to be. God moves in you because he loves his son, and his son is in you, and you are in his son. So because of that, he loves you so much that he chooses to move in a way you might not understand. But if you can learn it, then everything you do today, <laughs> you'll see the Lord in it, one way or another. <laughs> and it may not always be deliverance, 
but it might be something that you can see that God is taking care of you through the midst of the storm and brought you out the other side. And you could have faith in that.